And today on Making Grub with Buzz, we're going to make fried donkey dick and saute poodles. We're not going to make fried donkey dick and saute poodles. Oh. What are we making? Oxtail stew. That's right. That's what we're going to make. I know when you hear oxtail, kind of like, you know, not the typical uh, dish you can find at any uh, regular eateries. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a delicacy in some areas of the world, and it's a pretty much a staple of some um, diet in some areas of the world as well. You know, they consider a part of peasant food, you know, because these are parts of the animal that people don't normally uh, think of eating. You know, in Southeast Asia and Africa, and you know they uh, they tend to use all part of the animal when they slaughter them. So, um, oxtail stew is uh, it's like it's a popular dish in the Caribbeans and also in um, certain parts of uh, Southeast Asia as well. Uh, there are many ways of making this. Um, the Jamaican way are very spicy. It's got a lot of kick. You know, uh, some may not be able to uh, enjoy <clears throat> as much as, you know, others. I do. I like spicy food. But I kind of, uh, after years of making this dish, uh, you know, after a while, I kind of tweaked the ingredients and came up with my own. I kind of uh, um, started using some of the uh, methods uh, and, and they use in Indian and Burmese cooking and kind of work that into making this dish kind of my own. Um, so it, it's got a little heat and it's got a kick to it, but it's not too overwhelmingly uh, spicy, you know, because sometimes when dishes are too spicy, it kind of overtake the, the, the natural flavor of, you know, the main ingredient. And uh, you might want to try to avoid that if you want. Anyway, so um, I'm going to go over the, the, the ingredients that, that are going to be incorporated into this dish and uh, hopefully you'll get a kick out of it. Our main ingredient, the oxtail. Um, I got this from a neighborhood um, Chinese butcher. He has fresh oxtail. Uh, you know, it, it comes in, in its entirety uh, and fresh. <clears throat> and you can have them cut it into pieces. I had them cut it into one inch thick uh, medallions, you know, alongside the tail. Now the thing about oxtail is that uh, it's got a very thick um, bone, of course, center bone, and marrow is uh, not soft, but it's, it's pretty much set centered, and it takes a long, long time of slow cooking to really get the fat and the sinew and the flavor out of the bone. And when it does, it's just delicious. And the meat itself is um, it's more more dense than you know, the rest of the, 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 the body. And it's got a, a lining of fat and muscle that, when in slow cooking, um, brings out the flavor. Now, mind you, this is not healthy uh, eating. This is, you know, um, not something you want to have every day. You know, I don't recommend this for any sort of, uh, you know, diet that's going to benefit weight loss or whatever. This is just good old, you know, good eating. And anyway, so that's what it is. I got about, this is about three pounds of um, oxtail. The rest of the ingredients, of course, going into this, uh, making this dish, uh, we've got onions. Uh, I use about... Normally about two uh, large size uh, Spanish or, or uh, regular uh, onions, but since I don't, I didn't get any of the larger size ones, so I'm going to use about four medium sized onions uh, and chop these suckers up, and uh, the the natural sugar from the onion and the acidity will break the the meat and tenderize the meat while, while cooking. And also for the spices, um, you know, this is, this is items that you can buy off the shelf in any supermarket. 
Uh, you have your chili powder. You know, um, you have, of course, your kosher salt, um, and also for a little bit of a, an extra flavor and coloring, I use turmeric, uh, and also, and this is uh, this is a chipotle ground uh, chili powder. Now, this is the, what gives the the dish a uh, bit of the heat. You don't need much of it; about half a teaspoon for that three pounds is is just enough to give it a kick and it's not too overpowering either um, and one of the main ingredients I use is and I don't know how um, this is substituted in the other in the other uh, way of making oxtail but I use a uh, fish sauce um, that's this is from the Burmese school of cooking we pretty much use fish sauce to uh, to you know flavor a lot of dishes uh, instead of salt, you know, it has an extra kick to it, and and uh, it's it's uh, it's more flavorful. And you you know, if you're not used to it or accustomed to it, the smell alone might uh, have you screaming and running. <laughs> um, and of course, this black pepper, and also just um, uh, you can use a uh, you know a little bit of a, a cooking sherry or wine to help. Uh, you know, uh, tenderize and bring the flavor out of the meat. I like to put a little bit of the uh, seasoned rice vinegar, the, the, the Japanese mirror. It actually um, gave it more flavor, you know. Um, and then there are a couple of other ingredients that I will add in as, you know, the, the dish is being made. The, the thing is, I, I didn't, I, you know, I, I'm not a proper chef that works with, you know, uh, measurements of a cup of this and a, you know, a teaspoon of that. And you know, I came from an old, old school way of learning how to cook, which is watching my mother, you know, cook for us and just eyeball everything and a dash of this and a sprinkle of that. So that's how I normally cook and just tasting the uh, the dish as it's being made. So I'm going to try to <clears throat> um, measure the ingredients close as possible to how I would normally uh, flavor the dishes and so that you get an idea of what goes into it. So anyway, uh, and I'll stop prepping for it now. After chopping the onions here, uh, about four of them here, um, my onions. Okay, important thing is to have a very, very sharp chef knife. Um, actually, this is an old knife. I've had this knife for about 10, 15 years, but I know the tip is broken, although it's really sharp, and the weight and the way it handles is my favorite, so I'll, I keep using this. Anyway. Okay, here's the thing. I like to chop the onion thin so that it's quicker for the onion to um, uh, dissolve in the dish and incorporate into the meat faster. You know, when the bigger chunks takes too long because, uh, you know, unless you want, you want to be eating chunks of uh, onion at the end of the meal, I kind of like the onion to uh, be there just to incorporate into the gravy more. So I julienne them, you know.
chopping the onions here, uh, about four of them here. Um, you know, and then shedding a couple of tears. <laughs> 